after they robbed a bank and got away. Shepard will be in the house with headlines. It's a brand new hour on Fox. And we begin in West Palm Beach, Florida, where three judges are right now considering an appeal to the ruling that would have Anna Nicole Smith buried in the Bahamas. You probably know the disagreement by now. Her companion, Howard K. Stern, has already made funeral arrangements in the Bahamas for her. Smith's mother, Virgie Arthur, wants to take her daughter's body back to Texas for burial. A decision could come at any moment. You're looking at live pictures outside of the courthouse. Let's go to Phil Keating, who is stationed out there as well. Phil? Jane, two courtroom happenings in the state of Florida today regarding the late Anna Nicole Smith. One, as you just mentioned, dealing with next of kin custody of her remains. The other one, dealing with little baby Danny Lynn, Smith's five-month-old daughter. And if it sounds like I've been telling you this for about three weeks, that these ongoing battles are continuing, you're absolutely right. They've been going on ever since Anna Nicole Smith died in Hollywood, Florida, 20 days ago. She remains at the medical examiner's office, but let's take you into Fort Lauderdale today. Earlier in the Broward County family courtroom of Judge Lawrence Corda, that's where we heard the ongoing paternity battle filed by former Smith boyfriend Larry Burkhead. He, of course, has been fighting to prove he is the true daddy of Smith's five-month-old daughter, but to prove so, he needs DNA from him, which is no problem. He needs the mom's DNA and the baby's DNA. Well, as of today, he will now get a sample of Anna Nicole Smith's DNA taken after her autopsy, but as for the baby, next up, Bahamas. We got what we came for. Uh, we, uh, we came to Florida because we wanted the DNA samples turned over to our doctor. We have two-thirds of the order completed. Now we're on to the Bahamas where we've already had a hearing. And the decision of who will win next of kin rights, custody of Anna Nicole Smith's body and the right to bury her where they want to. If it's the mom, that's Texas. If it's Howard K. Stern and the guardian for the little baby girl, that will be the Bahamas. Well, oral arguments wrapped up nearly four hours ago and the three judge panel has yet to issue a ruling. Both sides with their attorneys arguing their version of how the court precedents of Florida as well as state statutes support their custody arguments. And of course, afterwards both feeling their side will prevail. I've never represented a slam dunk in this case but I am confident that the court is aware of the legal issues, is fully apprised of the facts and will make the correct decision. The battle within the courtroom this morning dealing with Virgie, Ma, Virgie Arthur, the mom of Anna Smith, saying that the judge down in Broward County last week got it all wrong, applied the wrong probate law as far as next of kin rights. They argue that should go to the mother. However, on the other side of the equation, the guardian ad litem appointed for the baby, arguing that, no, the judge in Broward County got everything absolutely correct. There are rights given to minors in the state of Florida because parents die all the time, sadly enough, and that leaves minor children who then have guardians appointed to make decisions for them. We will see how the three-judge panel interprets all of this. We expect that decision could come down today. They are aware of the hasty nature of the situation. As it is right now, Howard K. Stern's planning for a victory here and a funeral for Anna Nicole Friday, 10.30 a.m. in the Bahamas. Jane. Phil, we will wait. Thank you. Well, Anna Nicole Smith's mother visited her granddaughter last night in the Bahamas for the first time. She stayed at the house for close to an hour, and according to reports, she looked and acted pretty distraught when she left. She was with a bodyguard and a driver, as well as a woman with dark hair described as a relative. We'll have a live report from the Bahamas, the latest on that this hour. Well, two unusual suspects, you could call them, caught on a surveillance camera robbing a bank. Take a look. Police say these two girls may be as young as 16. They say they knocked off a Bank of America branch in Cobb County, Georgia. All they used for a disguise was a pair of those uh, flashy sunglasses to hide their identity, and they got away. We'll be speaking with one of the officers on the case coming up a little later on in the hour. Well, some quick-thinking clerks at a stop-and-shop may have cracked an identity theft ring. Four men are accused of trying to remove checkout lane credit card readers, where you, you know those things and you swipe your card and you type in your PIN number. Police say the suspect wanted to steal customers' numbers and passwords. Stop-and-shop is now nailing down those PIN pads in all of their stores. Federal authorities are searching for a person of interest. They're calling him in connection with the mailing of two explosive devices. Investigators have released this sketch of the man. He calls himself the Bishop. He was seen in the lobby of a suburban Chicago post office on the day the packages were mailed. One was sent to a company in Kansas City, Missouri, and the other to a skyscraper in downtown Chicago. 
And the U.S. markets are bouncing back today after yesterday's enormous slide. The Dow was up more than 100 points earlier. Right now it's up about 73, 76 or so. As investors scoured the market, they were looking for buying opportunities. Senior business correspondent Terry Keenan is stationed outside on Wall Street. Terry, what can you tell us? Hi there, Jane. Well, I can tell you it's a big difference from this time yesterday. Remember, yesterday afternoon, we had all 30 stock, Dow stocks lower, and we didn't know it at the time, but the selling was so fast and furious, the Dow Jones, which computes the Dow Jones Industrial Average, couldn't even keep up with the selling. Right now, we have 18 of the Dow 30 stocks trading higher. The other 12 are trading lower. That pretty much reflects what's going on in the rest of the market. We really haven't traded in negative territory all day. We slipped uh, right uh, into the red for a, a minute or two in the early going, but we have been up double digits ever since, briefly trading above 100. Ben Bernanke really calling the tune today. The Fed chairman was scheduled to be on Capitol Hill long before yesterday's sell-off, but today he was peppered with some questions, as you might expect, from the congressman at that hearing. And Ben Bernanke gave a vote of confidence in the U.S. economy. He said nothing's really changed, and there was nothing that he saw in the economy that would have warranted yesterday's sell-off. So that really soothe the markets. We also had some mixed economic data. The GDP number, which is somewhat of a backward looking number, came in weaker than original estimates, showing that growth did slow as we finished out the year of 2006. And we got some troubling numbers from the housing market. New home sales down by 16 percent in January. That's the biggest decline we've seen in 13 years. But investors are shrugging that off. The buyers are back in charge. And, you know, I talked to a couple traders. They say, you know, we're not going to get too greedy here. We just like to close the day with a gain, even if it's a, a, a small one, and move, move on from there. So uh, traders are going to be trying to hang on in the next two hours to see if, if we can still uh, finish up for the day. Jane? All right, Terry Keenan. We, of course, will be watching at this hour. Terry, thank you. Top government brass in Iraq are getting ready to host a conference in Baghdad. The tentative date at this point is March 10th. And it's interesting because on the guest list are Syria and Iran. And the United States says it plans to attend as well. White House correspondent Wendell Goler is uh, live on the North Lawn for us with this. Wendell? Jane, the White House says the U.S. is not caving on its refusal to talk with Syria and Iran, but instead plans to attend what will be a huge gathering of Iraq's neighbors, also including the permanent five members of the U.N. Security Council, the Islamic Conference, and the Arab League. Press Secretary Tony Snow says the U.S. won't even raise one of its biggest complaints, which is Iran's supplying the explosively formed projectiles used in Iraq, unless the Iraqis bring it up. If, in fact, uh, topics like uh, uh, EFPs and such like come up in that conference, obviously we will address them, but there will not be bilateral talks between the United States and Iran uh, or the United States and Syria. Ever since U.S. officials laid out evidence Iran is training and equipping Shia militias in Iraq and the president ordered U.S. troops to go after the Iranians responsible, the White House has denied its laying the groundwork for war with Iran and defended its refusal to talk to Iran about its actions until Tehran ends what the administration believes is a nuclear weapons program. Officials say Iran would likely use any one-on-one -on -one talks to try and relieve the pressure of U.N. sanctions over the nuclear program. Likewise, they say Syria must end its support for Hezbollah in Lebanon before there will be one-on-one -on -one talks with Damascus. The Baker-Hamilton Commission recommended talks with all of Iraq's neighbors, but the Bush administration was cool to that, and Snow insists attending the Iraqi conference is not an attempt to show diplomatic flexibility. Because this is an Iraqi initiative, and the one thing you do not, you know, Jim, one of the things they want is diplomatic recognition. They need to deliver. The Iraqi conference will involve two meetings, the first at the ambassador's level expected next month, the second at the level of Secretary of State this spring. Jane? Wendell Goler for us at the White House. Wendell, thank you. Well, a meeting between uh, two presidents, both in trouble with the United Nations Security Council. Iranian President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad is on a visit to Sudan. His host is the president there, Omar al-Bashir. He's under fire for the genocide in Darfur. A member of his cabinet has been accused of war, cri war crimes by the International Criminal Court. Iran, of course, is in defiance of a UN resolution to freeze uranium enrichment. Well, Angelina Jolie's work as a goodwill ambassador to the United Nations is bringing her back to eastern Chad to visit some refugee camps there. This Hollywood superstar saw how conditions, she says, have deteriorated since her last visit there about three years ago. She also made headlines writing an op-ed piece for the Washington Post on the crisis in Darfur. 
Well, some celebrities who recently attended a Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue party have been exposed to hepatitis A. Health officials in L.A. say an employee at the Wolfgang Puck catering facility has the virus. Guests included cover model Beyonce Knowles, Leonardo DiCaprio's girlfriend, and a lot of other models. Officials say the risk of illness is, quote, quite low, but that anybody who ate any raw food at the party is being urged to get a preventative shot. A spokesperson for Puck's catering company says the affected employee has been placed on medical leave. And we're getting reports this hour of uh, tornado warnings in northern Broward County, Florida. At this point, um, we don't have any indication of whether any tornadoes have touched down, whether there has been any damage on the ground, but that's just our, our initial readings from the National Weather Service. So as soon as we get more information on these warnings, just how long they are expected to last, what we're expecting there, we'll bring it straight to you. We're also waiting, of course, for a decision on where the body of Anna Nicole Smith should be buried. We'll look at another part of the case concerning the handling of DNA. Coming up, that decision could come at any time. And some cooks with a steaming, well, steaming hot MO, you could say, tossing hot coffee on store clerks and then grabbing all the cash in the register. Yikes. And could Paris Hilton end up going to jail? Coming up, why she is in trouble now and what a judge said would happen if she breaks the law again. I'm Darren Anderson, president of the National Association of Payday Lenders. We want you always to use payday advances responsibly. Payday advances are never designed to be a long-term financial solution. It is one way to deal with unplanned short-term expenses. Please borrow only what you feel comfortable paying back when it's due. This seal is your assurance that you're dealing with a responsible lender. Always use payday advances responsibly. A bladder control problem doesn't stop you from doing the things you want to do, but it can be a pain to deal with the interruptions. It doesn't have to be that way. Enablex is a prescription medicine that can help reduce leaks and accidents for a full 24 hours. Once daily Enablex is specifically designed to target the muscles that control the bladder, and more control means less interruptions. You should not take an Ablex if you have certain types of stomach problems, glaucoma, or have trouble emptying your bladder. Side effects of an Ablex include blurred vision and more commonly dry mouth, constipation, indigestion, and abdominal pain. Reduce leaks and accidents for a full 24 hours and do the things you want to do with less interruptions. For life less interrupted, ask your doctor about an Ablex. Are you receiving payments from an insurance company? Maybe you have a structured settlement or purchased an annuity and you're receiving small monthly payments. If you'd rather have a lump sum of cash now, J.G. Wentworth can help. You see, J.G. Wentworth is the nation's largest and most experienced financial services company, specializing in helping people convert their monthly insurance payments into the cash they need today. The nation's leading financial publications have taken notice and are recognizing Wentworth's market-leading services. Perhaps you were in an accident and received a structured settlement as a result, or maybe you've bought or inherited an annuity and want to convert those monthly payments into cash you can use today. Thousands of people just like you are taking advantage of J.G. Wentworth's unparalleled access to the financial markets to get the customized payout they need today. Call us now. Our experienced advisors are standing by. Call 866-429-6218. Is Brittany fair game for late night fodder? Why some people say they should cut off jokes mocking the former Mouseketeer. Comedian Andrew Dice Clay reacts. Plus, Miller Time takes on the Oscars. What's got Dennis fired up about the big show? Find out on The Factor. Celebs talk tough on global warming, but are their actions polluting our planet? Inside Hollywood hypocrisy on Hannity and Combs. Plus, as chaos surrounds the Smith fiasco, will the latest appeal end any chance of a Bahamas burial? Greta has legal analysis tonight. A couple things we're watching at this hour. One of them is uh, tornado warnings for uh, Broward County, northern Broward County, Florida. 
These are set to be in effect for about the next 15 minutes or so till 2.30 Eastern time. Uh, we'll let you know if we get any reports of anything touching down. Obviously, they're uh, on the lookout there for severe weather in Broward County. We're also at this hour waiting for an appeals court in Florida uh, to rule on this bid for custody of Anna Nicole Smith's body. You're looking at a live picture outside the courthouse there in West Palm Beach. Earlier, a Broward County judge ruled that he has no jurisdiction in the paternity case involving Anna Nicole's daughter, Danny Lynn. So a couple of different things going on today. Joining us now is Larry Hayes. He is a family law expert and attorney. Larry, good to see you again. Can Thank you, you simplify this for us? In terms of the first issue, the decision that we're waiting on today from this appeals court, what are those judges considering right now? And did they give an indication today of how they might be leading? They really did. Some of the justices asked uh, very pointed questions along the lines of, did Judge Sandlin have the right to delegate, and one judge even said abdicate, his responsibility to this guardian ad litem? And when you say, when we're talking about Judge Sidelin, just to remind people, he was the judge who got a lot of attention last week for saying he wanted to be a TV judge in his next life or other life. I call uh, him the weeping judge. <laughs> yeah, right, the one who was uh, sobbing at the end. And what he did was basically hand over the decision process to the guardian of this little five-month-old baby. And the judges today, you're saying, were questioning whether that was the right course of action? They were. There, a, a case was mentioned several times, the Cohen case that came out of uh, the same district in Florida, and it seemed to stand for the proposition that the judge is the one who decides who or where the body would be buried, not who decides who would uh, decide who where the body would be buried, but the judge actually makes the decision. Did you get a sense that they were concerned enough that they might overturn it, that say she shouldn't be married, buried in the Bahamas? Gosh, I hope not, Jane, because that means we're going to have round two with uh, the weeping judge. Can you imagine the, the Kleenex we would need for that decision on where to bury Anna Nicole? So if they did decide that, it would, it would be kicked back to his court? It would be. It would be remanded, as the term goes, uh, back to his court to decide. I really don't think they will do that. Uh, interestingly, some of the judges apparently were watching the TV coverage because one of them asked, although it's off the record, isn't it true that funeral arrangements have already been made and the lawyers responded uh, that they had. So I think this court uh, will probably render a decision on where she should be buried or either just affirm the decision that was handed down. And Larry, real quickly, it feels long to all of us and probably to the parties involved as well because it's been a couple of weeks, but should we have heard from this appeals court by now? Would you, were you expecting to hear earlier today or is this not a long time for a decision like this to be made? This is definitely on a fast track. Normally it takes a month to get into the appellate process in several months to have uh, a hearing like we had today and then several months to have a decision. I mean, they turned this around in a hurry and how refreshing has it been to see three justices who actually act like judges, talk like judges, and give good insight into, into what the judiciary process is all about. All right. I think they were doing a lot of damage control today, trying to get away from Judge Sandlin and his sideshow. Larry Hayes, uh, attorney and specialist in family law. Larry, uh, we'll see if we get a decision this hour. Thank you very much. We are going to take a, a quick break, but as we go to break, uh, take a look at these ominous pictures from Fort Lauderdale. Wow. Uh, tornado warnings in northern Broward County, Florida uh, this hour. They're at this point set to expire in about, mm, about 13 minutes or so. We'll see if they're extended or not. Looking for some, so, for some severe weather, obviously, in southern Florida. We'll keep our eyes on that. Also, of course, all eyes on the big board this hour. Markets trying to recover after yesterday's huge huge slide. Wall Street's reacting to the testimony today by the Fed chair before a congressional panel. What did Ben Bernanke have to say? How, does it, how is it affecting the markets, if at all? And what do you do if you're just a regular old Joe, just a stock investor? Well, we'll tell you. Dagan McDowell will be along to tell us what to expect, what your concerns should be. Next. Make your cash work harder with a savings account six times the national average. Get 5.05% APY on your complete savings account, plus free quick transfer.